JD's and Letterman. Ports. Versus compens. Versus. Versus compensators. That is what's on the menu today, boys. Which is flattest? Which is the real recoil delete kit? Now, there's an overwhelming amount of options on the market, whether it's ports or compensators. Goodness gracious, you can get lost on the internet looking through 876 different comps and 69.420 different types of porting styles. It's overwhelming, but do you wanna know what I find underwhelming? Is the amount of real data that backs up these claims saying, hey, Mine's the best, consume mine. Mine is most goodest, bro, with the little psh, psh, and they got the Pythagorean theorem, co Sokotoa angle sign. Listen, I wasn't great at math, but they do this and they're like, sources trust me, bro, it's the best. And I'm like, where's the real data? Because sources trust me, bro, only goes so far when, you know, remember when they said trust the science? Mm. So we gathered four different types of ports and a literal handful of compensators. Each of these are all going head to head. How are we going to measure the actual performance of this? How are we gonna determine which is actually the best? <clears throat> With the ransom rest. Guys, if you know what this already is, welcome back to the channel. If you have no idea what this is, let me tell you about it. It is a thousand dollar piece of equipment. Factories, OEM manufacturers use these things for reliability testing accuracy testing, fit and function. We are gonna use this thing to measure the degree of muzzle flip with each of these compensators in each of these ports. How it works is super simple. You drop the handgun into the grip module here, you crank down the knobs, tighten it up. With a little trigger bar right here, you activate the trigger. So the whole idea of this machine is to take out all human error out of the equation and give us very, very consistent results. Much more consistent than what we can measure with my hands because that just simply wouldn't be fair. Sometimes you do really good and you mitigate the recoil and you get, well, zero degrees, let's say. Sometimes you do really bad and you get a little bit more muzzle flip. This is gonna give us consistency and takes out all of the human error and only gives us the real true answer. So let's talk about the gun that we're using to test these ports and test these different compensators. It's a Glock 17, I know, super fancy, right? But it's super prevalent. Tons of people use these for duty. Tons of people use these for competition shooting and just plinking at the range. It's one of the most prolific handguns of all time. So that makes it a great candidate to do all of this testing with. So we're gonna talk about how flat these guns shoot, but there's a couple other things I want to add to this test. First, I wanna test muzzle velocity across all of these platforms. <laughs> we got a little malfunction here. Whoops, a daisy. Ah, well, anyways. So we want to test about muzzle velocity. I think that's very important because there is a lot of information on the internet. It might be true. It might be misinformation, but a lot of people are concerned about ports losing a tremendous amount of muzzle velocity. And I can understand that for sure because we don't want to take our nine millimeter and turn it to a 22 long rifle, but also does it matter a ton if we're just shooting paper and steel targets? I mean, yeah, I think it does matter. So we're going to test that. We're gonna get muzzle velocity out of a 100% stock Glock 17, and then we're gonna get the muzzle velocity out of each port and compensator, and we're gonna combine them and see what the true muzzle velocity is. Next, let's talk about the ammunition. All of this has been brought to us by Badlands Munitions Company out of sunny Arizona, made right here in the United States. Guys, this is all brand new manufacture, 124 grain stuff, all from the same lot, so we're gonna have great and consistent results. Every single compensator and every single port job that we are using here is all going to have the exact same ammo ran through it. The Glock 17 is even gonna have the exact same slide put on it, unless it is a port job, but it is going to use a 100% stock OEM Glock 17 guide rod and spring kit. All of them, the same spring is gonna go across the board with each of these ports and compensators. So we know the testing, let's talk about the candidates. Let's see what that competition lineup is. So we have four different porting jobs here. First is an inline port job. This is done by North Sea Machine. I actually have a couple of them in the lineup from these guys. They do fantastic work, great attention to detail. So this one here is a six port. It's an inline port, very straightforward. You kind of get the drill here. It looks like an inline six. The next one up from North Sea Machine is a hybrid port. So this is essentially a chunk style port taken right out of the front with a little extra two little dots in the rear there. It's kind of like an inline six, but they only do two. So this one here, big chunk out of the front, and then you have the two just behind it there. looks like it probably moves a lot of volume of air, but uh, we'll see how it tests. Next is Bowen Ballistics. This is a V8 style porting. So you understand where it comes from. There's eight ports, one on each side, left and right side of the barrel in the shape of a V. Yeah, it's Chevy, 350 small block. Praise Dale. 
Rest in peace, hero. Valen Ballistic makes a ton of custom Glocks. Super awesome dudes. Super good work as well. And then finally, we have the homebrew. This is four gigantic ports. Uh, four just huge inline ports that I did on a drill press. Fantastic. <laughs> Sensational. It's okay that they're not perfectly straight. It's just a happy little mistake. I'm trying my best. So we know the port job. Let's talk about the hand. I mean, um... The compensators, if you will. <laughs> Stupid. Might be funny. I don't know. First up is the Radiant Afterburner. This is a very standard, very straightforward pistol compensator. What I do like about this one is that it's very minimalist. It seems very, um, it flows. It flows very well with the Gen 5 Glock. It kind of looks like it could have came OEM from the factory. It looks like it might not do the best. I don't know. It might displace a little bit of volume here, but essentially you have two gigantic ports on the comp here at the top, and that's it. Next up is the Harrington Arms. The Harrington Arms is, again, another one that screws onto a threaded barrel. We have three different slots here for gas to escape and mitigate that recoil. One on the top, one on the left, and one on the right. The ones on the left and right are direct 90 degrees, so uh, it's just a very straightforward compensator. I don't know what exactly we're going to get with this, but it kind of looks like every other compensator out there on the market. And last but not least, we have the Agency 2 port comp. This is a big chunga, by far the biggest compensator out of the entire lineup. You see we have two on the top, one on the left, and one on the right. It simply threads onto a threaded barrel. So, guys, we know the lineup now. We know what the competition is. Let's get to testing. But first, guys, we got to talk about our homies here of the channel. Our big thanks to AIM Surplus. Guys, they are the biggest supporters here of the channel. Mom and pop shop kind of vibes with guys with a nationwide presence. Super knowledgeable, awesome top tier customer service and some of the best to deal with in the business period. That, my friends, is the homies and the homies supporting the homies at home. We appreciate you guys and thank you. All right, so we have all of our data for muzzle velocities. We have stock, the ports, and the compensators. Got it all written down here in my handy dandy notebook. I was a Blues Clues kid. Give me a break. Okay, so stock, the stock muzzle velocity. Guys, we have 1,065.7 feet per second muzzle velocity. What I find super interesting is with the compensators is that it's pretty much the exact same thing as it is stock. It doesn't take but, what, six feet per second off of that? I don't think that's a tremendous amount to lose. In fact, that could be literally just the chamber getting colder or hotter. So I don't think that's a tremendous difference, really. Compensators, that gives us 1,059 average. So with the agency, that was 1066.4. With the Radian Comp, that's 1056.5. And the Harrington Arms is 1054 Point one. That gives us an average of 1,060, basically. So, yeah, five to six feet per second difference. Compensators are not affecting muzzle velocity. I'm just going to go ahead and just make that statement out there. So, let's talk about ports. Now, ports, we did lose a little bit here, but not as much as I genuinely thought. And you might be surprised about this. So, with the North Sea inline six, that gives us 1,031.6. With North Sea Machines Hybrid, this is their hybrid comp, the chunk in the front with the two in the rear, that's 1,064.2. And with Bowen Ballistics V8 ports, that's 1,031.9. Homebrew, that is 1,001 feet per second. That gives us an average of 1,032 between those four. So if we take that average all together, basically we are losing roughly 30 feet per second average. That's not a big deal at all. Actually, that is tremendous amount less than I really actually thought. So 
We've got the muzzle velocity down. Let's actually get down to it and start testing. There we go, down to the four people stall. One, two, and two, and four. So we have all of our data on the comps and we also have them on the ports. Got it in the handy dandy notebook here. So let's go ahead and start with that stock pistol. That's our, gonna be our baseline. That's gonna be what we measure all of these against. So the stock Glock 17, again, all of the ammo is exactly the same. It's Badlands 124 grain, new manufacturer stuff. The Glock 17, 100% stock is 18.62 degrees of muzzle rise. So guys, every time that the gun goes bang, we are getting 18.62 degrees of muzzle rise in deviation from zero. Now let's talk about the compensators. Up agency. So this is the agency comp. It's a big two port. This is doing an average of 15.9 degrees of muzzle flip. So every time the gun goes bang, we're getting 15.9 degrees. With the Harrington arms, that is 16.34 degrees. And with the Radiant Afterburner, we have 16.1. So essentially the agency comp, that is going to be our lowest muzzle flip, our lowest felt recoil compensator at 15.9 degrees. So between those three comps, we have an average of 16.11 degrees of muzzle rise. That's between the agency, the Harrington Arms, and the Radiant Afterburner. Stock is 18 0.62. So if we do the math and we get the math in here, guys, we essentially have a reduction of 13.48% reduced muzzle flip out of these firearms combined average over stock. Now let's talk about the porting job. So the bow and ballistics, that's the V8 port, that's giving us 14.25 degrees of muzzle flip each time that the gun goes bang. The North Sea Machine Hybrid, this is their port with the chunk in the front and also the two just to the rear of that. That's doing 15.91. Now, the inline port from North Sea Machine is doing 14.65. So, and like I said, I told you we'd do the homebrew one. We're going to just take this one and kind of leave it out of the equation and not affect the professional results because, again, this was a hack job. I just kind of wanted to do my own thing with it. But I will say it's extremely effective. So that is doing 12.05. 12. 0.05 degrees of muzzle rise. So it's 2.2 degrees better than the actual professional job. Now, here's one thing I will say. Guys, I did this on a drill press. Do not do this because it ruins your accuracy. This thing is trash now, essentially. The slide's still good. The barrel is absolutely trash, but I did just kind of want to, you know, science and Bubba gunsmith it because I'm really good at that stuff. So guys, with the average here, we're at 14.93 degrees of muzzle rise with the port. So that is definitely better than the compensators because we were at 16.1 with the compensators. How much better are the ports doing over stock? 19.76% less muzzle rise over stock. Now, guys, 13.5 versus 19.7. We have a serious benefit with these actual ports. So there's less muzzle rise with the ports than there are with the compensators. So, so guys, I think we have arrived at our conclusion. Ports 
or compensators? Which should you do? I genuinely think ports is absolutely the answer here. Not only do we have more reduction in recoil, yes, there are some cons that come with that. It's a permanent modification. It is going to be a little bit louder and more concussive to your face and to your ears, but if you are going to modify your pistol, you might as well go all out, right? Like you might as well go big or go home. And the ports are just that. The ports are absolutely more effective. I can honestly say that when I am shooting my gun, especially with a quality port job, the action doesn't slow down. It simply just keeps the muzzle more flat. I can return to zero faster than a stock firearm. And I definitely feel a real legitimate difference between the compensators and the ports. I genuinely think that the compensators are just... um I just don't think that they are worth it. They're a pretty fair amount of money. Some of them are dirt cheap. Some of them are kind of expensive. In no way, shape, or form would I consider doing a compensator over quality port jobs. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wrap on ports versus cons. You should get the ports. And as always, guys, say it with me. Run your gun, not your mouth. We'll catch you next time.